Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Today we are hosting our third virtual seminar in North America on the new advances in light cell imaging and analysis with the InQSight platform. My name is Victoria Yatsula. I am the regional business manager for the bioanalytics division at Sertorius North America, responsible for cell and protein analysis platforms. Before we start, I wanted to let you know that we added for you some useful resources in the handouts section. Please feel free to download. If you're interested in requesting a meeting with your local sales and technical team, there is an option to do this during the webinar. Uh, there is a link in Chatter that we posted for you. Just follow the link to schedule a meeting. Our focus today is on immune cell killing and advanced cell models. We will start with the InQSight technology background, review techniques and methods for real-time analysis of immune cell activation and tumor cell killing, looking at individual as well as adherent and non-adherent cells in mixed cultures and 3D tumor models. It is my pleasure to introduce Laura Gaidos, Laura is a field application scientist for the bioanalytics division. Many of you may know Laura. She is our technical InQSight expert in the Northwest. And with that, I will pass it to Laura, to you, Laura. Thank you, Victoria. I'd like to start us off with my favorite illustration of why we use the InQSight. We all know biology happens in real time, but what about your analysis? This first example is a 24-hour endpoint assay. The second example is 48-hour endpoint, which see a very slightly different result. But the two top lines there are still about the same. Now here's the InQSight assay that shows what's happening in real time. With both endpoint assays, we missed a key difference with this treatment shown at the top, which has a response that peaks at 12 hours. Next, I'm going to give a brief introduction to the InQ site, and then I'll get to the details of the immune cell killing assays soon. With this video of the InQ site, first notice that it's in the incubator. That's where it lives. It's the best place for your cells. You can fit a lot of different types of vessels on these InQ site trays. And here we notice the objectives and the camera move to the cells so they are not disturbed at all during the imaging. This is our InQSight portfolio. We have the SX1, the S3, and the SX5. I'm briefly going to go over what each of them feature. The SX1 is an entry-level system. It's great for an individual lab or group who uses a serial workflow. There are modular upgrades available to grow with your lab up to the level of an S3, which then leads me to talk about the S3. This is our standard InQ site for high-throughput live cell analysis, and it's perfect for multiple users. You can fill the schedule with up to six plates on parallel workflows which means each plate can scan at a different time interval with a different objective. It comes with two fluorescent channels, either green and red or orange and near IR, plus the HD phase imaging. The SX5 is our most advanced inky site with multiple optical modules and the capability to perform all of our offered applications. It features the ability to image with up to three fluorescent channels simultaneously, plus the phase contrast imaging channel, which, and this enables more complex assays to be run. These are all the applications we've developed for the InQ site. Today, I will be covering these highlighted applications with a focus on assays using immune cells to kill cancer cells. I will show you examples of immune cell killing assays using a few different types of target cancer cells. There's an example with non-adherent targets, adherent targets, 
and lastly, a tumor spheroid target. In all these examples, the target cells express a nuclear label from our nucleate lentivirus reagents. And that first image of the non-adherent target cells, those cells are expressing nucleate red lentivirus reagent. The middle image is one taken from our new SX5 inq site. So there are three fluorescent channels here. These adherent cells, target cells, are expressing our nuclide near IR lentivirus reagent, and that is what we are viewing here in blue. There's also an apoptosis reagent in orange, and in green is our Fab Floor 488 dye. In this case, it's marking the immune cells with a CD45 antibody. The third image is an example of tumor spheroid, and that spheroid is labeled with the nucleate red lentivirus reagent. Immune cell killing assays are complex because they include two different types of cells. So today I'll go through how you can get the most information from your immune cell killing assays using the cell-by-cell -cell software module. Cell-by-cell -cell analysis software is an advanced masking algorithm that enables researchers to collect more data on their different cell populations without needing to set up multiple experiments. This example shown here is that one with the non-adherent target cells. And these here are labeled with the red nucleate reagent when the immune cells are unlabeled. So using the, the basic site analysis software, we can easily mask this red population. So that mask here is shown in yellow. But what about these immune cells? We're also interested in tracking the immune cells. So that is where cell-by-cell -cell analysis comes in. Using cell-by-cell -cell analysis, we can mask all the cells and categorize them into the red cells and the non-red cells. So I'll show you with a few examples how you can use cell-by-cell -cell analysis to get more information out of your immune cell killing assays. This first example is of those non-adherent target cells. In this assay, we have the target cells labeled in red. There is an annexin-5 apoptosis reagent in green, so that fluoresces once the cells are undergoing apoptosis. And then the immune cells are unlabeled. So the software, we're using cell-by-cell -cell analysis. We've been able to mask the immune cells with that blue outline and the target cells with that yellow outline. So let me just play these movies for you. On the left, the first one, I'll show the immune cells are not activated. So hopefully you notice there's just there's not much going on. There's some division of the target cells. And now this one, there's a lot going on here. So these immune cells have been activated with IL-2 CD3 antibodies. And I'll play it again. So hopefully you notice there's a lot going on there. There is a lot to analyze with this. And with cell-by-cell -cell analysis, we can analyze both the target cells and the immune cells. So using cell-by-cell -cell analysis, we can come up with these different classifications of the cells based on the green and red fluorescence. So this is a plot showing how we do the classification. We can draw gates, which are those two yellow lines going across this plot to split our population up into four different quadrants. So on the left side, we have the immune cells, which don't have red expression. On the right side are the target cells that are expressing red. On the top are the cells that have the green apoptosis reagent, so those are the ones undergoing apoptosis. And then on the bottom are all the live cells. So once we have 
those populations split up, then we can do graphing of the different populations to see what's going on. So here's the resulting graph. We can look at target cell proliferation, and we see with that the black line at the bottom, that's the highest E to T ratio. So we see that population is decreasing over time. When we look at target cell death, we can see with the highest E to T ratio, that's increasing over time by looking at the apoptotic reagents. And then lastly, we can look at the immune cell proliferation over time as well. So that was with the non-adherent targets. Here's an example with the adherent target cells. And again, this is using the new Incusite SX5 instrument. So we have three fluorescent colors here. The adherent target cells are labeled with the nucleite near IR label. And you see that in blue. There is an annexin 5 orange reagent. And the immune cells, in this case, are mostly labeled with the CD45 antibody conjugated with our Fab Fluor 488 reagent. So CD45 is expressed in most immune cells. So there's just a few that won't have this green. Again, on the left, these are the immune cells that are not activated. You see a lot of proliferation of those target cells. And now with the activated immune cells, there's a lot going on again. So using cell-by-cell -cell analysis, we can actually see what's going on and track the immune cell population. Here are the bottom images. I just wanted to show you without the phase contrast so you can see that green signal from the immune cells. And now since we use cell-by-cell -cell analysis, we can graph a few different things here. We can look at target cell proliferation, target cell apoptosis. And then finally, we can look at the effector cell population. So those are the immune cells. And we see that that population increases over time when the immune cells are activated. And since we use the Fab Fluor 488 reagent to label CD45, on the immune cells. We can track that over time as well. We see with the activated population, we don't see a decrease in that signal. But with the non-activated population, we do see a decrease in that signal over time. Next, I'll take you through the steps to run an immune cell killing assay using cell-by-cell -cell analysis. The example I'll show you is with the non-adherent target cells. First, I'll go over how to schedule a scan. Then I'll take you through how to analyze the images and put on that cell-by-cell -cell mask. Then we'll go through the classification step. In the end, you have, we'll have four different classes of cells as shown by those four different colors in the image. And then finally, we get to graphing some data. So now I will jump out of this presentation and into the Incusite software. All right, so first let me take you through how to schedule an experiment. So this is a little different to do cell by cell analysis, so I want to go over it. Um, at the top we have our timeline. So these each bar represents a plate that is going to be scanned. And now I'll click this plus button to launch the, um, an, the wizard to add an experiment. So we will just go through these steps. We'll scan on a schedule. This is a new plate. Cell by cell is done with the standard scan. And here we'll choose non-adherent cell by cell because we do want to get information about those immune cells. And those are non-adherent cell type. We can choose all the image channels here. And for these particular scan settings, it automatically goes to 20x, which is the best for this experiment. Let me go to the next screen. 
Here is our extensive list of plates that you can use. I find it easiest to just type in the catalog number here. There's our plate. I select where the plate is going on the Inky site. And now I'll select the wells to scan. And I can do maybe three images per well. And we see that this whole plate will take only 12 minutes to scan. And just give that a quick name there. And we can do the analysis later. If you've already done this assay before, you can set up your analysis to run concurrently. Now here we'll add it to our schedule. We already have four plates on there, but let's just put a new schedule on, scan every four hours. So this experiment will run in parallel with the others. And then now, it's adding to the schedule. All right, so here we have it on the schedule at the top now. So after that experiment is run, we can go to the View tab and see the images that were taken. So here's the images that were taken. Now you might notice this isn't this doesn't look like a full plate. Normally people run a full plate, but just to simplify for this example, we just ran a few wells. And you can see these large clusters here, though that's where the experiment's happening, those ones. And then the controls are all the other wells. So let me take you through the plate maps. So at the top we have the activated immune cells, so they were activated with IL-2 and CD3. We have the target cells and immune cells. And these bottom wells are the control with no target cells. Over here in the pink boxes are the control cells with no immune, the control with no immune cells. And then finally in red, we have the control with no activated, so it's immune cells, but they are not activated. So that's what's on here. Uh, you might also notice we do see some green background and don't worry, we'll get rid of that when we go through the background subtraction in the analysis. So let me launch the analysis now. We'll create a new analysis definition. Let me expand this window. So here we're going to choose the non-adherent cell by cell analysis. We have all the image channels. For our image set selection, usually I would choose five to 10 images that represent like all of the controls that we have, maybe a few different time points. But for this example, I'll just be choosing two. So let me choose one from the experiment and one from the control. Okay, so now we can see these up close. And let's preview to put that mask on all of the cells. you know what, I meant to include one more image. So let me use this back button and go back. I meant to include one at a different time point. So let me include, I wanted this time point here. So yeah, if you miss something, it's really easy to go back. All right, let's preview again. So 
So on this image already, I'm noticing there is some green background. So I think we'll go in and adjust the background subtraction. So I'll find the background subtraction down here under the green parameters. And if we decrease the top hat radiance, then we'll have more background subtraction. So I'll decrease that to 15. And now let's preview again. All right, so that looks better already. Now you notice the background is a little more even across the image. And let's look at that image from our experiment condition. Okay, so now we just want to make sure that the yellow mask is capturing all of our cells. I notice a few it's not capturing, so we can make some adjustments. Here I see a cell that's green. This looks like an immune cell. It's probably undergoing apoptosis. Looks like the morphology of the cell has changed a little bit from the other cells. So to capture this, we can adjust the cell-by-cell -cell parameters. On the left here, I would adjust the texture sensitivity. So I'll do that in a minute. Another thing I notice is some of these clusters are not really being broken up into the, the um, correct number of cells. Now you have to remember that these clusters are actually in three dimensions and this image is in two dimensions. So we won't be able to get an exact count of the cells in the clusters, but you'll still be able to see trends in the immune cell data. And so I'll try and adjust the edge sensitivity to break up that cluster into more cells. And some people do that and then they just choose to not even try and break up the cells in the cluster, and they instead mask each cluster as one object, and then analyze those clusters based on number and area. So you have a couple different options for how you want to do your analysis. So I will try and adjust the edge sensitivity all the way up, and I will also adjust the texture sensitivity to capture those dying immune cells. Let's just preview this again and see if our changes are working. Okay, let me check. The clusters look a little bit better, and I see that we're now capturing more of the immune cells. So the only other thing you might want to do is if you want to exclude some of the smaller cells or debris, you could add an area filter. Okay, so that's that's really it for the cell-by-cell -cell mask. It's easy to set these parameters. And then once you're done with this step, you launch the analysis, and the IncuSight controller will analyze all of your images at all the time points. So I'll just close this window now. I already have this analysis done. And I will open up that analysis. Once the analysis is done, this blue arrow will be here. When you click on that, you'll see the cell-by-cell -cell analysis. So that's right here. If we turn on our cell-by-cell -cell mask now, we see it's on all of the cells, and we can jump to the classification step. Here, I'll create a new classification definition. Here, we just want to choose all of the conditions we had. So I'll choose the, this is an experiment condition, and then we had three controls. There we go. Now we choose how we want to classify the cells. So we're going to choose green and red intensity. So let me just label these so we remember what we're looking at. Low green would be our live cells. High green is going to be the apoptotic cells. 
low red, those are the immune cells, and the high red is the target cells. And if you do these labels here, it'll make it easier later. All right, so here's our population in the middle, and everything on the screen is to help you gate the cells. So let's go over this. In the middle, each of those dots is an object that was identified with the cell-by-cell -cell mask. And we can see the population based on red fluorescence over here on the y-axis and green fluorescence here on the x-axis. And these bars in the middle, you can move them. And this is what we use to set the gates. So to separate out the immune cell population from the target cell population, I'm looking at the y-axis here. And these populations are pretty easy to separate. So I'll put that gate around one. And then we can use this chart over here to check the population percentages in, from each of those wells. So first, let's look at our population with no immune cells. So this is just target cells. We see that we're capturing 98% of those we're calling red. So that looks good to me. And then let's look at this well here. This only has immune cells. So then we're seeing 0% of these as red. So that looks good too. So I'm happy with that gate. Now let's move on to the green. And to look at our dying cells, we want to go to a later time point. So I'm choosing another time point here. And for this, I like to look at uh, the chart down here. This is showing the fluorescence and green fluorescence intensity for the population in each of these wells. So each well is a different color. Our controls, remember, are the red and pink here. So I'll just have this gate a little lower than one. Uh, we expect not many of the cells in the controls to be dying. And then at the later time point, we do expect some cell death in our experiment conditions. And that's what we're seeing here. So once you're happy with these gates, then the classification will be launched on the Incusite controller again. So I'll close this, and we'll look at the finished product. So now we open up the analyzed and classified data. Here's that cell-by-cell -cell mask again. And now we have all of these different classes of cells. So we have four different classes here. And we can graph each of those. So I'll open up the graphing here. One of these that I'm interested in is the immune cells. So that would be the population with low red, low green. And we can choose that metric over here on the left. We'll choose to graph it at all the time points. And we didn't have immune cells in these wells, so I will exclude those. And here's our graph. So we see with the activated immune cells, we see those are dividing. All right, so that concludes the software demo for this data set. I hope you saw that it doesn't take much to get a ton of data from one Incusite assay. Um, in this graphing, you would also want to graph your dying target cells and possibly your dying immune cells as well. And once you've gone through this analysis and classification on one experiment, you can reuse those parameters for future runs of that same type of assay. So now I'll go back to the presentation. Okay, so here is all that data from the experiment I showed you. And we can generate movies and images in the end, too.
I just want to review the tools that we used for this assay. We used Incusite reagents and the cell-by-cell -cell analysis software module. The reagents we used are the nucleotide-led red lentivirus. If you don't have the ability to transduce your cell lines or you don't want to go through that process, we also have the cytolite rapid reagents available. For apoptosis, in that assay, we used the annexin 5 green. We also have caspase 37 apoptosis reagents available. And with these reagents, you just add them to your media and they stay in throughout the assay. If you're using the SX5, you have an additional fluorescent channel and you may want to use our FabFluor 488 reagent. This reagent you can use to visualize cell surface receptors. So in the example I showed you before, we looked at CD45 on the PBMCs. And this reagent is available for use with mouse antibodies, IgG 2A, 2B, or Ig1. And it works by binding to a fab region of those antibodies. And it will only be fluorescent once the antibody is bound to the antigen on the cell surface. So this is different from typical secondary antibodies that you may use with flow cytometry because it's made for imaging over time. It actually remains in the media to label any new receptors that pop up on the cell surface. And this means we cannot have background fluorescence from the reagent in the media. So that's where OptiGreen comes in. And this component makes sure that the Fab Fluor 488 does not give off a fluorescent signal until it's bound to your antigen. So to take this one step further, now I'll show you how we do immune cell killing assays with 3D cancer cell cultures. In this assay, nucleite red cells were seeded in ultra-low attachment round bottom plates and allowed to form spheroids over a few days. Then PBMCs either activated or not, so um, the top one is showing not activated PBMCs. The bottom one I'll show you has activated PBMCs. So those were added and let's see what happens. Play this top movie. So you can see the immune cells around the tumor spheroid kind of in this halo. And in that movie, we mostly just saw the growth of the spheroid, not much change though. And now this bottom one is with activated PBMCs. So there we see the target cells are dying and we notice that by the loss of red fluorescence. So we can graph that loss of red fluorescence and that's what's shown in this graph here. With the activated PBMCs, we see that black line is decreasing. For this assay, the recommended consumables are the U-bottom 96 or 384 well plate that's ultra-low attachment and allows the spheroids to form. And for the target cells, you'll need to use nucleide or cytolite lentivirus. The recommended analysis we have for this is using the fluorescent analysis only. So you're only analyzing the target cells and you can look at the integrated intensity of that fluorescence or the area. This next assay we call multispheroid because there are multiple spheroids in each well. They're formed by seeding cells on top of a layer of matrigel and allowing them to grow for a few days. In the assay I'm showing here, SKOV3 cell type um, spheroids were treated with different concentrations of the monoclonal antibody treatment Herceptin. In the top me movie, uh, it's only Herceptin that's added. And in the bottom one, we also have immune cells. So let me play these.
Right, so in that we saw the spheroids grew a ton. I think some of them even merged together. Play it one more time. All right, pretty cool looking. On the bottom, now we have the added immune cells. Mostly we just don't see the same growth of those spheroids, and some of them even shrink, I think. All right, but of course we have the metrics to really see what's going on. So I'll draw your attention to the graph here. On the graph we see the higher concentrations of Herceptin, those are the darker gray lines. They, we see a smaller increase in the red fluorescence compared with the control, which is in blue. And that blue line is just the multispheroids alone. This assay was actually done on multiple cell lines. And so we could calculate the IC50 of Herceptin for each of those cell lines. And so that's that other graph. And we see that the control cell line, the black one, um, MCF7, does not respond to Herceptin treatment. So the recommended consumables for this assay are matrix gel. For this, we use a 96-wall flat bottom plate. And still, you need nucleolite lentivirus or cytolite lentivirus. And again, the recommended analysis is based on the fluorescent channel only. And you can look at the integrated intensity or the average object area over time. So I'll take you through the steps to analyze spheroid assays using the spheroid software module. The example I'll show you today is of a single spheroid assay with different drug treatments, but a similar analysis can be run on an immune cell killing assay. Um, for this, I'll, I'll skip how to actually set up the experiment since we already went over that, but you would just choose the spheroid scan type. And then I'll show you how to put that yellow mask on the spheroids. That's how we analyze the images. And we'll get to graphing as well. So again, let me jump out of the PowerPoint and take you into the Incusite software. Okay, so this experiment was imaged using the, the spheroid software module. This is a special scan type that takes a bright field image, so that's what you're seeing here. And it also does a good job condensing a 3D spheroid that has multiple image planes into one two-dimensional image. And this makes your analysis super simple. So first, let me show you the plate map for this assay. So here, we did run a full plate um, testing a few different compounds. But then we only have images shown here for the, the, blue, the blue wells here. And this is basically just different concentrations of drug with the highest concentrations at the bottom. All right, so here are those spheroids. And again, the top ones are with the lowest drug concentration. This scan is at the last time point, seven days. So we see the largest difference between the, the spheroids at the top and the bottom at this time point. So let me go ahead and launch the analysis. We'll create a new analysis definition. This is a spheroid analysis. Here, if you were doing an immune cell killing assay, you would just uncheck the face bright field and only analyze the red. But um, I'll show you how to do the phase bright field today. So now we'll choose a few different spheroids to image or to test out our parameters on. 
Let's choose some from the bottom here. And then maybe one from the top. I'll just hit preview and we'll see that mask be generated on all the spheroids. Okay, so here we see that mask, yellow mask is on the spheroid. It looks like it's covering it pretty well. I can open up the image layers, take on and off the mask. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I also noticed oh, some debris in here was masked. So you can see this yellow dot here and then one down here. Uh, but that's okay, we don't even need to worry about putting an area filter on for this because in the graphing you can choose to graph the largest object in the well. So it'll automatically exclude the smaller things if you choose that. Let's look at the other images. Those all look good too. So the only other thing that you would want to adjust here is the background subtraction that's found at the bottom under the red. So we can adjust the top hat mask. Here um, I would want to measure the radius of this spheroid, so I'll choose the ruler tool on the right here. I select this, my mouse becomes a ruler, and we can see what the radius of this spheroid is. So we see at the bottom. It says it was measured at 275 micrometers. So I can reduce this top hat radius a bit to subtract more backgrounds. It's probably not even necessary for this, but if you do have a higher background, this would be important. So I want to go a little, maybe 20% above that. So I'll put in 350 for the radius. All right, and we don't see that. That doesn't seem to change much, again, because we didn't have much background. But if you did, that would be important. So that's all there is to this analysis. There's not very many parameters to set. It's very easy. So I'll close this now and open up our, our analyzed data. So under that arrow here is our analyzed data. And now if we put the mask on under the layers here, we have a bright field mask. We also have a red object mask. So those both look good. And then we can do our graphing. So here, like I said, you have the option to graph the largest object. So that's what we'll choose here. And there's our graph. We see with the highest concentrations of the drug, we see a decrease in size over time. Okay, that includes this software demo for the spheroid module. In my opinion, it's, it's the easiest analysis to do. And let me go back to the presentation. So here's all the beautiful data we got from that experiment. We have our images, our mask, plate map to remind us of what we did, the graphs, and then here is some representative images. So that lowest concentration of drug, the spheroid is bigger than the, the highest concentration. Here's a review of the tools we used. The nucleite red lentivirus was for the target for the um, spheroid cells, and if you had immune cells, those would be unlabeled. We used a 96-well ultra-low attachment plate and the spheroid analysis software module. So today we went over these yellow highlighted assays and all the ways to evaluate cytotoxicity by immune cells. I want to highlight one more type of 3D assay that's our new to our applications offering, that's the organoid culture QC assay. 
So this assay allows you to make data-driven decisions about your organoid cultures as they form, mature, and grow using automated image acquisition and an integrated analysis. These images shown here are mouse hepatic organoids grown in matrix gel domes. And for this assay, you can use a 24 or 48 well plate, and you don't need any reagents. This is a label-free assay. The recommended analysis we have for this is using the bright field area. You can look at object count and the, the average area per organoid. So now I'll turn it over to Victoria again to go over the conclusion. Thank you, Laura. Uh, the examples of data that we shared today were generated with cell by cell, incusite spheroid, and at the end, Laura also featured the new organoid software module. Other modules available are the neuronal activity and ATP metabolism. We did not cover these today, as well as chemotaxis, scratch wound, or neurotrack applications. These are also available. If you are interested in trying out any of these modules, just reply to the original invitation that you received for this webinar from your local sales specialist, and we will be happy to work with you to initiate the tri trial period. And uh, we also have a wide range of reagents available. Our reagents are safe, non-protruding, specifically optimized for these applications and designed for long-term live cell imaging and analysis. If you want to take advantage of our end of year promotions, just reach out to your local sales representative. You can also visit our eShop at snbioscience.com slash shop. We <clears throat> recently added a new feature that allows non-logged in customers to see our products, build a cart and also request a quote. Um, and of course you can place your order directly from your online account if you prefer. Just to recap briefly, today we covered advanced applications for immune cell killing, looking at subpopulation identification and three color analysis. We also did a brief software demonstration on immune cell killing using our cell by cell and spheroid software modules. Our software can only be run on the InQSight platforms, SX1, S3, or SX5, our flagship instrument. So these are the current instrument models. If you are interested in scheduling a new instrument demo, please reach out. We would be very happy to demonstrate capabilities of any one of the selected instruments in your lab using your cells and protocols. And of course, we would love to hear your feedback on this session, as well as other topics for the upcoming events that you are interested in learning about. And again, just a friendly reminder, if you would like to request a meeting, please feel free to do so right now, and someone will be in touch with you shortly, or you can send us a follow-up email. So with that, I will transition to the Q&A session. We have some questions that came in for Laura. Our first question is, what reagents would you recommend for an immune cell killing assay? So that, it does depend on, like I showed you the type of target cells that you have, but basically we recommend having a nuclear label for your target cells and an apoptosis reagent. And again, the, the actual recommendations will change slightly depending on your specific setup. So we really encourage you to contact your local field application scientist to discuss the options you have. Um, but in general, for, for adherent target cells, we recommend the caspase apoptosis reagent. And for suspension target cells, we recommend the annexin apoptosis reagent. And then if you have the SX5, you have an extra fluorescent channel to work with. And you may want to use a, a different reagent like the FabFluor 488 reagent to look at a specific receptor on your cell surfaces. 
Okay, thank you, Laura. Uh, next question. Can you use cell by cell analysis for an antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity assay? Uh, yeah, you can definitely do ADCC assays with the ANKI site that look pretty much the same as what I showed. Um, you can measure cytotoxicity using one of our apoptosis, or we have cytotox reagents. The cytotox reagents fluoresce once the cell membrane is compromised, so it will capture cells undergoing cytotoxicity in general, not necessarily apoptosis. And you can also use cell-by-cell -cell analysis to help you get the most information about your cell population. Uh, and the follow-up question, uh, can I do this assay with two different populations of immune cells? Yeah, you can you can do the assay with two different populations of immune cells. You just have to think about um, which cells you need to label. Because of course, if you have, well, in this case, with two different types of immune cells, you probably also have target cells. So then you have three different populations and you'll need to have at least one of those immune cell populations labeled. So we have a couple of different reagents you could use to label those populations. I went over the nuclear lentivirus reagent today. There's also cytolite lentivirus and the cytolite rapid reagent would be good for immune cells as well. Uh, next question, uh, how long can you run an immune cell killing assay for? Uh, so that, it really varies on, on the cells you're using and the, immune, the target cells on the immune cells you're using. Um, I've worked with people who have run these assays for less than 24 hours. Their immune cells are just really good at killing those target cells. And they just, they see huge differences in cell death just in the first, even the first 12 hours. Um, but then I usually suggest they run it for at least 24 hours to 48 hours just to make sure they're not missing anything. Um, and then others run the assays for a week or even longer. I've, I've even worked with some people who spike in more cancer cells after a few days to look at T cell exhaustion. So the thing to remember is that the instrument will continue to take images until your assay has been run to completion. So you can really run it for as long as you want. Uh, we will take one more question. Um, next question is, how would the analysis be different with immune cells? So, the, um, I guess that's referring to the, maybe the spheroid analysis. So if you're doing the spheroid analysis that I went over with immune cells in there. Um, like I showed you, when you're going through the analysis, you need to uncheck the box that says bright field phase and then only do the red fluorescent analysis. And un unfortunately, you can't analyze the immune cell. You can't use the cell by cell module with the spheroid module together. Um, but for that analysis, you'll be looking at the target cells that are labeled with a fluorescent marker. Thank you, Laura. Uh, this was the last question that we can take now, but we will review all questions that came in today and follow up with you individually. This concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you again for joining us today. We really appreciate your time, everyone.